G'day. I was having one of those, hmm, now what do I do moments, and then a friend of mine dropped in bringing this with him. This is a uh, part of a bandsaw, and uh, he's in the process of converting from imperial bearings to metric bearings, and asked if I could make up this piece here. Um, so there's a couple of, of uh, intricacies with it, but it's, it should be a pretty straightforward thing. Before I get stuck into this and start making up the uh, the new part, I thought I'd just have a, a quick look at it and uh, run through how it works for, for people who might be interested. So this is a, a, a wheel tilt device for a bandsaw, and what it's doing is just sort of changing the axis of the bandsaw so that the, the, the surface the blade's running on is, is tilting, uh, and that way you can get the bandsaw blade tracking properly. The way it does that is there's a, this thing here is a screw, goes right through and just is on the casting there and by turning that back and forth you're, you're tipping that. There's a couple of bearings that run on here uh, that the wheel with the band saw a blade on it run on and that's the problem. Um, this is a conversion job that the bearings are a 20 bore and this is this was for, for, for 19 so it's one of the problems with, with changing from imperial to metric sometimes you, you can't get the size you want and so can I make up a new thing? Now that just pivots on a pin uh, it's not the sort of thing that you're, you're adjusting all the time maybe next every time you put on a new blade you, you might one of the problems here is the stock is is roughly inch and a half square, 38 point something or other millimetres. Uh, that comes out of a, a piece of stock that's, or round bar, which is 55. I don't have any square stock of that size, so I'm going to have to get a bit of round bar and take that down. Um, I was given a, a length of stuff, but it's just slightly too small, and I don't want to take a chance on, on missing some corners or something that might be, uh, might be critical. So I'm going to use a bit of uh, 60 stock and machine that down to square. And then I'll need to mount that in a, in a forge or chuck, kick it over so it's eccentric and machine that uh, diameter in. There's a hole through there and the last oh, 12 millimeters or so is threaded for this screw. So that'll be a clearance hole down to there, then thread that there. Um, clearance hole I can put in from, from this side, tapping drill diameter from this side. Uh, I may flip that round so I can get a decent access for the, uh, for the thread. Uh, there's a circlip groove there. Those can be a little bit tricky too, so I'll, uh, I'll you know, have to be careful with that. Um, so it's a, it's a relatively straightforward part, but it's got some, some should we say, technical um, aspects to it. There is one thing I want to check. When I turn this and, and you know you consider that an eccentric it's actually quite a decent um, size for the base but also is quite a decent movement and so I thought I'd check it in my four jaw and what I suspected would happen has happened in that the hole isn't big enough to fit the whole thing in it um, usually when I'm turning a, a small eccentric on a, on a uh, you know small diameter shaft 25 millimeters or something like that I can put it through the bore, clamp it up, everything's wonderful. This one I'm not going to be able to, and so this piece of material, which is 100 long, I'm going to have to shorten that down to about 70, so that I'm just, you know, I'm going to be able to sit that there. This is actually a little bit shorter than 70, but you might just be able to pick up that this surface is below the top of the jaw, so I'm going to make this, this piece here a little bit thicker, so it'll sit out uh, like that do all my turning and things here and then to to finish off I'll I'll flip it over and just face the back off um, that way you know I have the I still have the clearance for the jaws So far I've managed to take a bit of this stuff, 
lopped a bit off the end and take it down to a, a square piece which is the same size as the the back end here this isn't actually precisely square uh, one side is 0.2 of a millimeter bigger than the other side shouldn't matter too much um, so I'm now going to set this up on the lathe with the appropriate offset and trying to remember which side is which of course and uh, now put the, the the shoulder on this is a bit of a bit of an awkward one normally when setting up for an eccentric turn like this I'd put the stock in the chuck uh, center it and then using the dial indicator push it across exactly how much it needs to go now the the difference between the, the center point and the middle there is 7.9 something millimeters so uh, what's that? Five sixteenths, which means I need a dial indicator that can can cope with uh, you know a five eighths difference between here and here, sixteen millimeters. Now, that's not an easy thing to come by. What I've done is said I've ascribed where the centre should be, and I can bring up my tail stock here and get that pointing you know pretty much at the centre. I'm running the dial indicator up and down. The sides here to make sure that the, the workpiece is square with the, the the chuck or sort of parallel with the angle of, at the axis of, of uh, movement here. This way I've centered using the the indicator. This way I've 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 relied on the the uh, the center uh, on the on the mark, uh, and that should be good enough. So what I'm going to do now is I'll, I'll drill that out to put a. Uh, a center I can locate my live center in, and then I'll start uh, reducing this down to the to the dimension that it needs to be. As you can see, I've just done my first pass here. I've just knocked the the outer corners out. Uh, there's a lot of work to get it down to to this sort of shape, but at the moment I'm getting this bit. Once I've got that, the rest of it should be relatively easy. But I'm using my uh, rounded tool here just so I get that that radius in there. part way through here I've got uh, the, the start of a semicircular shape on this there I'm just starting to nick the corners here uh, doing this sort of thing is a bit of a juggling act you've got to juggle your speed and your feed and all that sort of thing until the, the lathe is happy uh, I started off with with a too high a speed and although I was getting blue chips coming off um, it was making an enormous thump when it when it uh, you know landed um, now that I've got these two corners shall we say continuous uh, it's a little bit better but it's one of those things that you just have to you know monitor conditions work out what your depth of cut is going to be and uh, and, and go from there there's my blank um, pretty much as I as I'd hoped it was this is this is a smidge undersized but that doesn't matter because that's just really clearance for the for the surface the bearings run under so uh, I'm now going to put that into a, a chuck, take this down to thickness, but what that will also do is mean that that surface will be perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder, which is, which is what I want. Uh, it wouldn't matter so much if it was out this way, because this is, after all, a tilt mechanism, but if it was out this way, it might make the, 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 the blade, you know, track a bit funny. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think that's a worthwhile thing to do. Uh, I'll then have to uh, dial that back in, but because I've now got a cylindrical surface here, I can I, sh I should be able to dial that back in here uh, without too many problems. Back into the forger again. Uh, I've thinned down the base piece here, so it's the same thickness as this existing part. Uh, I've put the through hole in, and I've got the, the, the tapping hole in the back there for the uh, thread. It's actually a, a, a um, 5 16th UNF. Um, one, one thing I did discover is that there's a countersink there. And I thought, oh yes, 90 degree countersink, not a problem. But on closer inspection, that's actually a 60 degree countersink, which matches nicely with the, the center. So uh, I think I'm right in, in the way I've done this because 
the features that are in here are the same features that, or the sorry, the features that are in here are the sort of thing that I'd put in to help manufacture this. I turned this down to within a probably about a thou of, of the, the final size, which is, is meant to be bang on 20 millimeters for the bearing. Uh, I stopped short for two reasons. One is that uh, carbide insert tool tooling, when you start taking, trying to take very small cuts with it, can sometimes behave erratically, particularly if you haven't got your center height spot on. Uh, the other issue is that because I know there's some wear in this lathe that I'm, I wouldn't necessarily get a uh, consistent diameter across here so uh, it's easier to come along, measure with a micrometer in several places, uh, file, emery, all that sort of thing to get it down and taking one thou off with, with some emery and a file is not, is not difficult. So I've got this thing, it's within six tenths of a, of a thou of being right which is what 15 micron, I'm going to leave it at that. You may or may not be able to see that. I just put the circlip groove in. Uh, I used a tool like that out of my miscellaneous toolboxes. Um, probably best, you know, one of those tools you make up once and you and you you use it carefully if you're going to do a lot of this sort of stuff because uh, one of the problems with circlip, or one of the one of the things about circlip grooves is they have to have sharp corners on them, and you want them to be precisely the right dimension. It's no good saying oh about that because if the circlip uh, if the groove is too deep the circlip will, will float around, if the corners are rounded it can ramp itself out so you've really got to have a, a nice uh, well defined groove. There's catalogues online and you can look at those to find out exactly what the dimension should be. If you have trouble measuring uh, a groove, if your if uh, calipers or your micrometer isn't, isn't uh, you know able to get in and these ones fortunately have got a uh, a ground piece on the end which is is pretty good. One trick you could use is this. Zero your ruler, put the ruler in the groove and then measure across the ruler and the shaft and that'll tell you how much that groove is is in on one side. That gives me 19.39. It's a 20 mil shaft so I've gone on 0.6 on either side. So that's just a, a, a way of uh, measuring these things if you if you haven't got a, a set of uh, calipers with a with a nice sort of you know fine point on them. I just drilled and reamed the block for the uh, the pin so it mounts in there. The handle screws in and, and we'll just leave that out ever so slightly. The circlet fits. About the only thing that left to do on this and I'm not going to show that here is uh, when we start to, to look at mating up with bearings is possibly that will need a little bit of emery. Uh, it's around about six tenths of a thou over so 15 micron. Um, not much in the scheme of things but it might cause some problems so uh, once this is all fitted up and ready to go then uh, have a look at that. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you for the next one.